I'll come back to you. Yes? Everybody needs to listen to him. Yeah? Okay. 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 All right. Anybody disagrees with that or? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what he's calculating. Huh? He's the No, he's bringing all the savings back to time zero and subtracting it from PC. That's exactly MTV. Right? Yes. All right, anybody else? Anybody else wants to come up with a different way of pick? Yeah? I've pretty much did the same thing, so I calculated an annuity based on what the principal cost was. Okay. Perfect, very good. So you can see there are two different ways which are exactly identical. Well, that's almost, well, is that even possible there? <laughs> they are equivalent, not identical. Like, how can two identical things be different? So yeah, there are, there are two different ways of doing it, which are essentially very, the basic idea is the same. One is to move all the money to up front, right? So in that case, you can calculate, which basically is NPV, right? So you calculate the, You calculate NPV, which is going to be minus the project cost, right? Plus yearly savings, which is an annuity, so you are bringing it all to the big name, so times 1 plus i bar n minus 1 divided by i times 1 plus i bar <coughs> Now, what if this number is negative for all of these options? Sorry, <laughs> well, just don't do it, right? Because you know that this answer is zero. So let's calculate NPV here. You know for the top option it is zero. So you need to do better than zero, otherwise you will just not do it. But of course, under what scenario you would say no, you still have to do it even though the number is negative. Safety, safety very good. If the concern is safety, then of course you have no choice but to do it. But if that's not an issue, then we calculate NPV. So can you calculate for this, please? Uh, Sorry? I'm assuming I is 10%, right? So I, I, I is, yeah, I is 0 0.1, yeah, 10%. Uh, 790? 250, Five thousand two hundred sixty-seven. 
Okay, all right, so you have an answer, right? So answer of course is go with option four. But you can see, incidentally, has the highest spending, but of course, you also make significant savings, significantly more every year. <coughs> Did you take entry 5 or 10? 5, right? And was 5? Yeah. In this situation, since you know that 1 plus i to the n minus 1 and all that is just, if i is the same for each situation, it's just a positive. So why would you just do like a minus b plus y and a pseudo first? You can calculate this number of priority. Yeah, you can calculate that and multiply it. You think so that's simplifies the calculation? Yeah, like, I mean, like, you could just assume it's a constant. Like, it is a constant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, if it is constant, we wouldn't really care about it, right? No, you should have to doubt it, because you're having 20% of it, only where you might say. Well, you're trying to find some. It's the same for each case. Shh. Well, what are you guys talking about? Is there anything interesting that I'm not able to say? Is there something more to be said about this problem? No? You're talking about something else? Well, what was the other way of doing it? Okay, the other way of doing it is going to be, instead of calculating NPV, we're going to distribute the cost, right? So we're going to distribute the cost, so we're going to calculate what is called, uh, I guess, equivalent. <coughs> I don't know what the word for this would be. Equivalent? Equilibrium? Okay, equivalent yearly savings. Okay, something like that. I think the book has a word for it. I'm sorry, I don't, I apologize. I don't remember. All right, let's call it equivalent to yearly saving, which is going to be Ys, right, minus, you convert P, uh, equivalent annual savings, I think. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So you convert P to an annuity, so you get IP, 1 plus I to the power N. Right? Now can somebody tell me what, what, what EYS will be for this? From NPV, you can directly figure out EYS, right? Sorry? Yeah, well you can see that the ratio of the two, of course, is fixed because, yeah, so. Uh, so yeah, all you have to do is you just multiply this whole thing by basically the inverse of that and you get here, right? So yeah, you can see they're basically the same thing. All right, so. Any questions about this? Yeah. On the, the principle, like why would you put interest on it? Because that could have been money you could have saved over time as well. See, it doesn't really matter where the money comes from. All money, what's the word? All money is green, right? It, it, there's no history associated with it. If, if, if you saved it over a period of time, as soon as you save it, it starts accruing interest. So the only the money is only defined by at what time you got it. Okay. Right? So it doesn't matter whether you're using your money or you're borrowing money, because that's exactly the same. Because if you have own money, you're going to want interest on it. If you're borrowing, you have to pay, right? So it's, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about it, where it came from. OK? Yeah? Can you make P into an annuity? Like, you're only going to use it. Like, you're only paying it up front once. Why do you make it into an annuity? Because again, in reality, see, in reality, you never have to pay for just like one equipment, right? The whole, the whole idea is to analyze the profitability. So analyzing the profitability, there are two ways. One is you distribute. The problem is that one cost you're incurring in the beginning, the rest of the cost you're incurring every year. So how do you add them? You can't directly add them. So the way to add them is either bring everything up front and you add it to this, or you distribute it to every place and then you just add that up, right? So it's just two different ways of looking at it. So is that P like 3,000, 5,000, 4,000, and 8,000? That's the cost of buying it. That's the money you have to pay up front. Is that the P that you put in your new? Yeah. Yeah, that's the project cost. Yeah, you can say the project cost. OK? Yeah? Minimum what? <laughs> so you could do capitalized cost. The thing about that is that that essentially is to, in fact, you have to use an idea if these ends are all different. These L's are all same. You don't have to go to infinite cycles. Like the spiders is enough. Or another way of looking at this, that for each of those, to go from this <coughs> to the capitalized cost, you'll be multiplying like a fixed factor, right? So each is fun. But I was going to come to that actually now. So now, shh, now let's, what if, what if n was not same for all of them? 
What if this was five? This was, let's say, this was, let's say, maybe seven, five, four. Do you find like a common denominator or something? Sorry? Like that? Do you do like a common denominator? You can do common denominator, yeah. So, or five. Okay. What was, what if the n was different for the four options? Now what do we do? <laughs> yeah? Are you talking about lifetime or Lifetime, lifetime, yeah. Yeah? You could find the least common multiple of all those n's and then you would go to that many cycles. Exactly. So you could say, well, in this case, I'm going to do my analysis over, I guess, 7, 42, 210, right? No, not 210, 4, 420. Oh, right? no way. Yes. You're doing analysis for 420 years. <laughs> you get your answer. <laughs> Sorry? Well, you don't actually have to do the analysis because it's all annuities, right? They all cut out. Yeah? Can you just do that capital cost? Very good. All you could think of it as the capitalized cost. Right? You think of what is going to be the capitalized cost for all this at time zero, and then you that you, uh, depending upon which one you're choosing, positive or negative, you basically choose the one with the most negative capitalized cost, right? Because, does it make sense? Yeah? Yeah? Now, I know that we take safety very seriously, so how would you make this case if, like, let's say, all of them had capitalized costs? But there's still the safety issue of not doing yeah. anything. So then the first thing is you decide which one of these are unsafe options and you completely eliminate them right away. So to do that, you have to figure out, okay, this is a thing. So then you have to figure out what is the constraint because of safety. If the constraint is the temperature of the surface, then you have to figure out, is this thickness, because this is thinner than this, is this thickness enough to reduce the temperature sufficiently so that you don't have that problem? And if it is not, then you just remove, remove that as an option. Right. So then how, now and then you just do the comparison between the rest. It doesn't matter. You choose the one that is least unprofitable. But how would you, like, would that still be with business?